The second era of Mistborn may be an exciting and unique entry to the fantasy genre, but it falls slightly short of the original trilogy. Aside from the standalone Elantris, Mistborn is author Brandon Sanderson's first extensive fantasy story and the perfect entry point to the Cosmere, his fantasy universe that connects his various series and novels. Nearly two decades after Mistborn, The Final Empire was published, Sanderson's popularity continues to grow each year, with him releasing four books in 2023 via his record-breaking Kickstarter campaign. In 2024, fans eagerly await his fifth installment of the Stormlight Archive. The next Mistborn book will be released in some years, but the seven current novels offer plenty to discuss in the meantime. The original trilogy is set in a relatively typical medieval fantasy setting, barring the unique environmental differences that distinguish each planet on the Cosmere. Rather than picking up in the same setting, Mistborn Era 2 has a 300-year time jump, with technological advancements impacting the world and its previously established magic system. This allows for a fresh story to take place in a world drastically altered and developed by events readers are already familiar with. Mistborn Era 2 puts a new spin on the world, but the original trilogy is better. Starting with what works well, the world-building in Mistborn Era 2 seamlessly transitions with its time jump and technological advancements. The Acknowledgements section of the Alloy of Law explains that Sanderson wanted to move away from the idea of fantasy worlds as static places, where millennia would pass and technology would never change. It's hard to imagine this working in many fantasy series, but the shift establishes a new aesthetic that feels faithful to the original Mistborn trilogy's world while offering new elements to play with. Brandon Sanderson is widely praised for his complex, distinctive magic systems, and it's often one of the first subjects of praise for Mistborn. The various uses of different metals across allomancy, hemallurgy, and feruchemy seem convoluted, but they're introduced at a steady pace that makes them easy to engage with. Suddenly factoring guns into such a system seems like it would be difficult, but ERA 2 develops new fighting styles to accommodate for more advanced weaponry. The world-building differences between eras can come down to the fantasy aesthetic preferences of the reader, as both work fluidly enough that it's hard to state one works better than the other definitively. But as Brandon Sanderson says in his introduction to the Stormlight Archive, but a great book for me isn't about a magic, it's about the people that the magic affects. At their core, Sanderson's books are character-driven novels, and that's where the original Mistborn books have the advantage. Mistborn Era 1 has better characters, but Era 2 has better dynamics. Mistborn Era 2 The Bands of Mourning Brandon Sanderson Despite bearing the often grueling burden of introducing audiences to the world of Skadriel, Mistborn, the Final Empire is still the best Mistborn book. Not only is it exhilarating as a heist action story or a mystery thriller at different times, but The Final Empire establishes characters that are accessible, meaningful, and ceaselessly compelling. Kelsier's charisma explodes off the page, while Sazed's wisdom and endearing nature make him the perfect supporting figure. Meanwhile, younger characters like Vin and Eland begin arcs that constantly tug at the heartstrings.